morning and welcome to Unity of Bellevue's online celebration service. I'm so grateful you joined us. My name is Susan Neidig. I'm the uh, president of the Board of Trustees and a prayer chaplain here at Unity of Bellevue. So I think this will be our last Sunday without our beloved Marla, uh, Reverend Marla. She will be back next Sunday. <laughs> She'll be in the office, I think, starting on Tuesday, coming back from her sabbatical. Um, so here at Unity, we're all about waking up. We're about expressing God's love through us and as us. Even as we are separated in space, we're in different places. Uh, we are one with each other, one with God, one with everything. There is no separate. There is no other. There is only one. This month, we are enjoying a speaker musician uh, series. Monica McDowell Elvick and I will be presiding over the service. And um, Becca will be introducing our guest speaker musician this morning. Becca. Thanks, Susan. It gives me great, great pleasure this morning to introduce our musician speaker, Karen Drucker. I understand that Karen's been a singing mermaid. She's been a singing casket. She was literally elevator music when she was hired to sing and play the piano in a moving elevator. She was the music director for three different New Thought churches and she was given an honorary doctorate of music for her work within the Centers for Spiritual Living and a grace note, which is an award for outstanding contribution to New Thought music for her work within the Unity Movement. Karen's recorded 20 CDs of her original inspiration of music and her book, Let Go of the Shore, has been a bestseller. Karen speaks and she sings. She leads work spot sh workshops at women's retreats, mind, body, and health conferences in very church various churches around the country. She loves making music. She loves making a difference and touching hearts. And that is exactly what Karen does. We sing Karen's music together often as a community, blessing to the world, loving kindness. I'm so blessed I could go on. You guys all know what they are. But we love you, Karen. We're so grateful for the words and the music that you've created for us to use to feel the divine. In a little bit, Monica is going to post some links in the chat for those of you that want to find out more about Karen. And uh, we'll get to hear Karen speak. And for now, Karen, would you open us with a song? I will. Thank you so much, Becca. I appreciate it. Wow, I feel like I'm already so welcomed. I'm looking at the chat and all these people are saying these wonderful things to me. And that's so great. So I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I wish so much I was there. I love coming to your area, but this is the next best thing. So here's the deal with anything that I do, I want you to sing along. So this is my magic sing-along wand. So if anyone ever told you you couldn't sing, now you can. No, this is a pretty easy one. It just goes like this. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. That's the whole thing right there. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this healing, this healing, this healing, this healing day, this healing, this healing, this. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for. Now point your fingers. Look around at the, the. Look around at all these different people and just look at someone and say, "Thank you for my friends, Kathy. Thank you for my friends." Thank you for my friend spirit. Thank you, my wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friend. Scroll around to the next screen if you need to. Wonderful. Let's do that again. Let's really look at each other and say, Thank you for my friend spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Mandy. Thank you for my wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant. All right, actually, since we're doing this, I want you to put your hand on a body part right now and thank it. So 
if you're alone, just, you know, you just stick that hand wherever you need to. So, but if you're with someone else, it's just your own body part, not your person next to you. So you're going to thank that body part. You're going to say, thank you for my whatever it is. And you're going to give it a quality of being. Okay. So you're going to go one, two, three, four. Thank you for my, thank you for my, thank you for my, thank you for, give it a quality of being now. My da na 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 Another body part. One more. Thank you for my. Thank you for my. Thank you for my. Thank you for my. Give it a quality now. My la da na 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 na. All right. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, spirit. This glorious, this glorious, this glorious, this glorious day. This glorious, this glow. Actually, let's do it even more. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life, spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life, spirit. Oh, do glorious. My glorious, my glorious, my glorious life. My glorious, my glorious, my glorious life. And thank you for this day, spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Now, before we go, everyone put your hands to the screen. Just welcoming everybody here this morning and with your hands saying, I see you, I hear you, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Spirit. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much, Karen. We are so grateful to have you with us this morning. So join me as we turn within in this very moment. We give thanks to the great presence that is never an absence. And in this moment of gratitude and thanksgiving, we become more aware of this presence that we call God. God the good, God the one life, the one mind that lives and breathes us all. The source of all abundance, peace, joy, grace, love, and all good. We anchor in this one life confident that all is well. We allow ourselves to be lifted in consciousness, knowing that there is no separate, there is no other. We are one with God's love. Peace of mind reigns supreme. Joy abounds. Clarity of well-beings is ours right here, right now as we are filled with thanksgiving and gratitude for life. I give thanks for the technology that allows the gathering of this spiritual community. I give thanks for the music, the message, and the people who are gathered. I open this service with a grateful heart and let it unfold, knowing that we are open and receive the message. We are receptive to the truth that is expressed here today. I call it good and very good, and so it is. Amen. Whew, on the screen is our affirmation for today. I'll give you a few moments to read it silently, then we'll read it together. Please join me in declaring the truth for us all. Let us speak this truth together with conviction. I am at one with the living one. This indwelling presence is alive, alert, and awake within me. And I open my heart to its divine expression. I live in this promise of unity for myself and for everyone around me, actively creating a life that works for me. I confidently contribute to creating a world that works for everyone. And so it is. 
All righty then. Well, are you ready for me? Everyone go, yeah! Okay, so I have a brand new song for you. Brand new. Are you ready? Goes like this. Let it be whatever it is. Let me cry if tears gotta fall. Let me stop if I need to rest. Let it be whatever it is. Can you sing that with me? Let it be whatever it is. Let me cry. Let me cry if tears gotta fall. Let me stop if I need to rest. Let it be whatever it is. I keep thinking every day that I need to do more. Write that novel, clear the clutter, mop and wax all the floors. Can I set aside all my shoulds, coulds, and woulds? Can I be okay when it's not all good? So let it be whatever it is. Let me cry if tears gotta fall. Let me stop. If I need to rest, let it be whatever it is. Holding on to what was with all my might. Honey, it's over, it's done, it's out of sight. The struggle, the pain, gotta let it all go. When I trust my heart, that's when I know I've got to let it be whatever it is. Let me cry if tears gotta fall. Let me stop if I need to rest. Let it be whatever it is. It's time for kazoo solo. Do you notice it matches my outfit? So important. It's a talent. <clears throat> Whatever it is, the good and the bad. Whatever it is, the happy, the sad. Whatever it is, let it all be okay. Cause whatever it is, it just is. So let it be whatever it is. Let me cry if those tears gotta fall. Let me stop if I need to rest. Let it be whatever it is now. Let it be whatever it is. Let me cry if tears got to fall. Let me stop when I need to rest. I'm gonna let it be whatever it is. Let it be whatever it is. Let it be. Because Mother Mary comes to me and she says, Honey, child, come on, just give it a break. Surrender. Just let it be. Just stop trying and grasping. Just let it be. It's my new thing. Wait a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. So that song, um, there's a wonderful songwriter, singer by the name of Sloan Wainwright. And we were at a virtual songwriting retreat. And we were coupled up to do, to write a song. And we both looked at each other and said, you know, this is right at the beginning of all of this craziness. <clears throat> and we looked at each other and said, well, what are we going to write a song about? And we both just started talking about what was going on. And the main line that kept coming up for both of us was, how do you keep your center? How do you keep happiness? How do you keep a spiritual practice going in the midst of all of this craziness that we're going through? You know, how do you just stay in that place of knowing spirit is there, that all is well? I mean, all the things that we practice and we talk about in the midst of this pandemic and with all the other stuff that's going on. And so the question came down to in this song, can I be okay? And this is one of the lines in the song. Can I be okay when it's not all good? No matter what's going on around me, can I be okay if it's not all good? You know, I, uh, 
well, I just had this idea of just telling you the story. So years ago, there was a, uh, a movie called Siddhartha. I don't know if any of you ever saw this. Siddhartha with Keanu Reeves as Buddha. A little bit of a stretch there. Keanu Reeves as Buddha. But, you know, they put his hair a little man bun, and I don't know. It was a little bit of a stretch to have him. But there was a scene that really says what this is all about. There was a scene that he was meditating for months and months, or could have been years and years. I have no idea. I should research this. But he's sitting underneath the Bodhi tree, and he's in deep meditation, and trying to go for that enlightenment place. And he's in deep meditation. And right before he reaches that state of nirvana, of just one with everything and just total enlightenment, right before that happens, the scene um, is it's quite amazing. It's a really great visual. I suggest you, you check out this movie. Right before he obtains enlightenment, all of a sudden, the winds start blowing, and his man bun comes undone, and he's, his hair is going, and the, there's thunder, and there's lightning, and there's all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, in the distance, you see a whole army of these um, uh, Indians coming over the, the hill, and they have their bows and arrows, and they are about to, to fling these arrows towards him. And when they do, I mean, it's just this... just millions of these people when they do the the arrows have fire on them and the arrows start coming towards him and you know you're just going curtains curtains for him but as soon as they hit his field of enlightenment all of a sudden those arrows turned into rose petals and so the arrows are coming towards him and he stays in this place and all the arrows just turn into these rose petals and at that moment, he wakes up, and he's in that place. Now, that's an exaggeration of how we could be, but wouldn't that be lovely with all that is going on around us that you could stay in that place? Actually, I've got a great quote that says this. Peace. It does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of all those things and still be calm in your heart. Isn't that great? So that's what my talk is about today is self-care. How do we stay calm in our hearts when anything, I mean, I'm talking about the big stuff that's going on, but just even whatever's going on in your life that is causing you stress. So one of the practices that I have that I start off every talk with, every one of my women's retreats, this is kind of one of my stock things, is... And if you go walk away from my talk with anything today, if you get this one practice, it could be a game changer for you, is that you put, you put your hand over your heart and you take a deep breath. And even if you do this for 30 seconds every morning before you start your day, you just say, what does my heart have to say? What does my heart have to say to me? And you just take that deep breath and you just listen. And again, this doesn't mean that you're sitting for hours and hours waiting for enlightenment. You just are checking in every morning before you start your day doing anything. And you just say, what does my heart have to say? And you listen. You listen for that still, small voice that's going to come up and say something to you. It could say, you know, that meeting I'm supposed to do this afternoon, not so much. I don't really want to do that. Or... Um, or I feel happy today, or I want to know how I can be of service today, whatever it is for you, that you let it come up. But I also want to say that it's important to also honor whatever comes up and to make a choice about that, that you can choose that something comes up for you and you could say, you know what, I see the truth of that, but I'm not ready to do something about it. So for example, you know, what comes up is, oh, you know, the meeting I have this afternoon or the lunch date I have with this friend. And all of a sudden, when your heart says, you know, I'm tired. I want to just stay home. I don't want to see anybody today. And you allow that to be okay. But then you allow it to be that the choice you make about what decision you're going to make about that is okay, too. It could be too threatening to say to your friend, I don't want to meet you today. Maybe that just feels too uncomfortable. But we're going to get to that later, a little bit more about boundaries. But what does my heart have to say? Now, I got this idea. I love telling this little story. <clears throat> I got this idea from um, I was in a little play that went around to all the different Bay Area 
pediatric wards all around San Francisco Bay Area where I live. And my character in this show was called Dr. Hart. And I had a heart smock and heart earrings and a big heart hat and I was just big one big giant heart. And my job in this show was to go to each of the children over and over with my little stethoscope and say, what does your heart have to say? What does your heart have to say? And I'd put my little stethoscope on their little chest and they, you know, they were all hooked up to machines and they had these little eyes looking at me. I mean, it just practically made me cry every time, but it would be an opportunity for them to say what they really felt truthfully without their doctors around, without their parents around. They were able to just say, my heart's sad because I want to go out and play. My heart is sad because my parents are worried, whatever it was. And so I think that when I saw the opening that happened with those children, it became an opportunity for me to look at how can I use this in my life? How can I use this to say every day, to start my day in that way, what does my heart have to say? And I truly believe <clears throat> that how we start our day is the foundation of a spiritual practice. Because when you start your day just immediately waking up, you know, hitting the snooze button and going, Ugh, I'm late already, as opposed to walking, I mean, let me ask you this. Did you walk into the bathroom this morning, look at yourself in the mirror and go, oh my God, did you get more beautiful overnight? Look at you. You look at this beautiful body, you specimen of gorgeousness. Did you do that? Did you? Or did you look at yourself or your day or your life and just go, oh my God, everything's dropping and everything's horrible. And so I'm a little prejudiced here because I, I learned very long ago that the idea of starting my day with a song was the way to go. Because when I could start my day singing something positive, it would, it would set the tone for the rest of the day. So that's why you know, all, my, all my CDs have the very first song be like what if you had a... Uh, if you had an alarm clock radio or a CD player radio that would wake you up, you'd hear, thank you for this day, spirit, thank you for this day. Or you'd hear, um, I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. So all my albums start with the very first song being like this. Now, uh, some of you might have heard this story, but I, the, I got this idea from years ago when I was in a hotel and the very first song I heard when my alarm clock radio went off was Linda Ronstadt singing to me, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good, baby, you're no good. And then she says, I'm going to say it again, you're no good. You're... And so what do you think I'm hearing all day long in my mind? I'm singing in the back of my mind all day long, you're no good, you're just no good. Don't bother, you're no good. So I learned that I had to turn that around. I'm so good, I'm so good, you know, whatever it is. I actually went to a church a while ago, and there was a, a, a group of people who came up to me and said, wait till, wait till you meet Mildred. And I'm like, who's Mildred? Mildred was, she's this 90-year-old woman who her spiritual practice every day is to start everybody else's day singing a song from Karen Drucker. So she, what she does is she calls up, she has 20 people on her list, and I think this rotates around. 20 people on her list that she will call and leave a message on their phone machine saying, hi there, Cindy, this is Mildred. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. And she'll do this every day. And people just say, they just know, you just don't answer your phone at seven o'clock in the morning because it's Mildred singing to you. But you know, that's what it's all about. Like how we start our day is what it's all about. And you know, when you think about when you think about that we have 60,000 thoughts a day, how many of those thoughts are positive and how many are negative? And how can we keep bringing ourselves back to center? Because we're human. We're going to get triggered. We're going to listen to the news. We're going to do whatever. And you start to just veer off. And if this is center, some of you might know my song, You Are the Face of God, you know, the sign language to it. And this is God when you go like that. And so to me, this is God. This is where I want to be. I want to be in that, that place, that place of just centeredness and connection and, and being in spirit. But again, I'm human, and I start to drift off. 
But the key is, how do you bring yourself back? Do you bring yourself back in a way that is judgmental or, um, you know, putting yourself down? Or do you bring yourself back saying, oh, look at the kitty. Uh, do you bring yourself back in this sweet, gentle way? So, for example, I, I wrote a song a long time ago. Um, I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. And that to me seems like that is a such a profound spiritual practice that we could be doing right now in these times, is being so gentle with ourselves. And it's allowing ourselves, and when I say being gentle, I mean to allow yourself to check in, see how you're feeling, but whatever you're feeling, let it all be okay. Like my song said, if I need to cry, let the tears fall. We are in a weird, weird, sacred, bizarre time right now. And it's, it's so important, I think, to be able to allow ourselves to have all those feelings come up and know that they are going to pass through you. That it's, it's a little bit like when you think about if the feelings come up of panic or anxiety around all that's going on, you know, if, if you look at the idea of having five beach balls in a pool and you're trying to keep all those beach balls down, you know, like, like you don't want any of them to pop up, it's, it's so much effort. But if you allow yourself to just feel whatever it is, give yourself permission. I think that's one of the biggest uh, lines I want to say in our time today is give yourself permission to just feel whatever it is and allow those feelings to just come through because when you suppress them, I mean, you know that, that expression, whatever you resist persists. So if you resist it, if you keep going, no, 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 I'm fine, everything's great, you know, we're going to move through this and all is well, you know, doing that spiritual bypass where people just say, it's all good, it's all good. I just want to slap people when they say that to me. It's all good. Well, yeah, it might eventually be good, and yes, you might eventually get lessons from it, but to allow yourself to say, right now, in this moment, this is how I feel. Doesn't feel good, but this is how I feel. And when you do that, my experience has been, and I'm sure yours too, I mean, I'm not saying anything that y'all don't know, I'm just here to remind you of these things, that when you allow the feelings to come up, it allows them to just move through. And, you know, it could be that five minutes later, you feel totally different by just allowing yourself to just move through it. But, you know, one of the things in this time, I've heard so many people say that, oh, this is their time that they can write that novel or lose the weight or get in this whole new exercise program. You know, for some people, they're doing that. But for other people, it's like it's all too much. And that's okay. Again, giving yourself permission. But to me, it comes down to really minding your energy. And to me, I look at life like there's this big ball, there's this big balloon that's filled with your energy. And if I came up, and your spiritual, your everything, your nature, your spiritual world, everything is in this balloon. So this is you right here. If I came up with a, with a big pin and went like this, it would go, it would, it would pop, right? But what we tend to have happen in our lives, especially right now, is we have these very subtle energy leaks. And an energy leak to me is anything like, here actually I have a little list of it. An energy leak is um, anything, any activity, thing, person, thought, emotion, place, food or substance that drains your life force. I got this from my friend Deb Kern. Um, food, bad food, junk food, uh, uh, negative people, um, self-critical thoughts, alcohol, cigarettes, all those kinds of things. I mean, you know, self-care is, I mean, the, the basis of self-care is, of course, you know, eating right and exercise and sleeping enough. But I'm talking about radical self-care. I'm talking about dropping that down to really look at this energy leak. And these energy leaks are so subtle because they're like little teeny pinpricks that are going like this. so much that you don't even know that they're happening. And when we allow ourselves to be aware of where those energy leaks are happening, 
Like, for example, you know, when I'm in a workshop with people and I'll ask, what are your energy leaks? And one of the first things that everyone always says is negative people, being around negative people. You know, and one of my favorite uh, quotes is from Maya Angelou, who said, I don't let negative people come into my house because it just, their negative energy gets on the curtains and I have to wash them after they leave. Not great. You know, it's just, and that's where boundaries come up. That's where boundaries come up where you look at what works for you in your life and what doesn't. And I think one of the sacred things about this time that we're in is really looking at, looking at this idea, but looking at how you're going to change it. When we get back to whatever normal might be, what is it that you want to clutter clear from your life? What is it that was not working before that now you've had an opportunity to look at and to either really look at and go, wow, I never realized how much I loved this thing and I'm, and I'm not going to take it for granted anymore, or look at the things that weren't working and say, no more. You know, I mean, there are so many things in my life that I've just been able to really look at more clearly because I've had time to just sit and process it and look at it and say, you know, that's a, that's a no in my life. What, what, I mean, here's an example of something, and, and this, is a, this is an exercise I do in all of my women's retreats that I'd like to give you right now, is to make a list this week of what's it and what's not it, or rather, what lights you up, what dims you down. What gives you energy? What drains your energy? And just take a look at that list and, and really look at it and say, how much am I doing what really lights me up? And how much am I giving attention to these things over here that don't? I mean, here's another quote I have. You often feel tired not because you've done too much, but because you've done too little of what lights a spark in you. And so that's really what I want to talk about today in, in looking at self-care. Is like, what lights a spark in you? What is something that you can do that will allow you to just take this time that we're in and enjoy it? You know, to look at maybe you can have more time to do some of those things that you've put off. Um, but at the same time, it's giving yourself permission to say, I see that I want to do that and I'm not quite ready, or I want to just rest a little bit more, or I want to just, what Becca's doing, just I want to have my little kitty on my lap and just <laughs> stroke my little, my little cat. Whatever you want to do, it's giving yourself permission to rest or to do whatever you want to do. So, um, you know, the bridge to that song that I just sang, um, Gentle With Myself, it says, I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. So it gives you all that permission to do it at whatever level that you want to do it. Because here's the bottom line that I want to really bring home with everything I'm saying today, is that when you are good to yourself, when you take time to know what your heart wants, that's when you become more present and that's when you become more available to the world. And that, to me, is what heals the planet. It, what, it's what heals all of us, that when you go and you've got your little mask on and you go to Starbucks, you know, you can still make that connection with that little barista who's behind the, the counter and just give them love to anybody you see because it's all coming from your eyes at this point. And when, when we fill up our tank, our eyes can communicate that to each other. Our eyes can give that love. Our eyes can say, I see you, I hear you, I know you are out there, I know you're there. One of my lines that we do in all my retreats is, I see you and I hear you. Because isn't that the greatest gift we can give anyone? I see you and I hear you. And I think right now that is the thing that we are needing the most is connection with each other. You know, when you look around on this screen, I hope you all have it in gallery view. That, I always keep it in gallery view so I can look at everybody. And this is your community. I mean, yes, you know, you come for the talk. Yes, you come for the music with Becca. Yes, you come for, you know, all these different reasons for church. But you know what? You're mainly coming for this, for this community. You know, this is what church is. This is what church is, is this community. You know, it's interesting. I just saw um, this great 
little poster, a little ad that said, uh, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was, it was a guy fishing. And the, it was something like, sometimes it takes what we're going through to realize it was never about the fish. Meaning, <laughs> what it was about was being in community with these other people out on the boat. And you know, I'm a competitive swimmer. I've been on a swim team for uh, many, many years. And I realized, and I swim in the San Francisco Bay, and I went to, I belong to this place called the Dolphin Club. I've been a member of the Dolphin Club for 30 years. And now they have this thing where you have to sign up, you know, and you know, sign up for your time when you can come in and drop your bag and, you know, you have your mask on and then you go do your swim and you get your bag and you have to leave within like 10 minutes. And, you know, I was doing this because it's like I love swimming in the bay. It's my, that is what lights me up. As weird as it is, that's what lights me up. And the last time I swam the other day, I walked out of there and I felt really empty. And I went, what's going on here? You know, I love swimming in the bay. What's happening? And I realized it exactly like that little ad that I just told you about. I realized it's not about the swimming. Yes, it's about the swimming. Love to swim. But what I realized is I was grieving the community. I was grieving going into the locker room and seeing all these women and they're all getting ready to go swim or they've come out of the water. And the, the ritual would be we would all be in the sauna. And, you know, after you swim in the bay, you, you go in the sauna for about 20 minutes to warm up. And everyone's putting on their lotions and it's every different body size and every different age and ethnicity and sexual preference and everything. All these different women are sitting in the sauna and I realized that's why I love the Dolphin Club. And I realized that I need to create my community somehow. That's why I love coming to church, because of my community. And yes, I can at least see people this way, but it's like that's what I've been grieving. And it's when I, when I felt that, it's like, you know, let it be whatever it is. Allow myself to just grieve that. Maybe it'll come back the way it was. Hopefully, I pray for that. But to me, it's like taking the time to connect with people as much as we can. Connect with your community. I mean, even right now, put your hands to the side. Go like this. And touch hands with the next screen over. And just feel like you're, you're, you're touching that person's hand right now. And even go to the top and go to the bottom. And just all the little Brady Bunch squares that we're in, feel that connection with each other. <clears throat> but, you know, here's the thing. I, I, I'll, I'll one little story about connection. So, you know, one of the main things that I did before all this happened, before all my gigs for the entire year were canceled, is I was on the road a lot doing this. And I, I love my work, but, you know, being on the road can be a little bit stressful sometimes. But I was on a Southwest Airlines flight recently <clears throat> before all this happened. And the, the flight attendant came on the overhead speaker and said, all right, everybody, put your, put your shades down right now. Put your shades down. And everyone kind of like, you know, they're all on their cell phones and they're all, you know, watching movies. And all of a sudden everyone goes, oh my God, what's happening with the plane? And everyone just freaks out. Everyone puts their, their, their thing, their, uh, what is it called? You know, their window thing, window shade. And she said, all right, now put your call light on. So everyone puts the little light on above them. And then she says, all right, everyone, this is Marvin. Marvin is 97 years old today. We're all going to sing happy birthday to him. Okay? Got it? And so all of a sudden she goes, one, two, three, sing. And everybody starts singing happy birthday. Now, we're all in different keys. The front part of the plane started early. The back part of the plane where I am, we're like, you know, three beats behind them. It was a cacophony of just, let's just say it sounded really bad. But... It was so incredible to see him up there just taking in this entire plane unified, singing him the worst happy birthday you've ever heard in your life. But it was so bad that it was so beautiful to me, and I just got completely choked up. At the end, she instructed him to blow, and we all had to take our call buttons off so that the lights, so it's like he was blowing the candles, uh, you know, on his cake. And then they made him a little crown of um, pretzel bags and swizzle sticks that he put on his head. 
And, you know, everyone applauded. It was just the most beautiful connected moment. And, you know, when the plane lands, everyone's always just trying to get off the plane really fast. They made him stand at the front of the plane and just accept everyone's well wishes. And everyone came off that plane wishing him happy birthday, smiling. And now we're, we're down, you know, getting our luggage. And people are, like, waving at each other. And, oh, wasn't that fun? And that's what it's about. At any moment, we all have that opportunity like that, that where I started talking about Keanu Reeves with his enlightenment. In a way, that's what connection can be. It can be split second. You could be watching your little movie on your screen and not talking to anybody around you on the plane. But in the next moment, you can be unified and connected and one. And that's what it's all about right now. It's being unified and connected. I mean, I just, I just wrote a song with some other folks that just said, all we can do is be there for each other in those times when we don't know what to do. And all we can do is be there for each other and help each other through. Because here's the, here's the point that I want to make today, is that each of us is a gift. Each of us is a gift, and we have the gift of our life. We have the gift of our joy and who we are. That even if it's just coming through our eyes, through, you know, with our mask on our faces, we give that gift to everyone we meet. And when we look in the mirror every day and we see ourselves as a gift, that's where it starts. So if you take anything from my talk this morning, it's allowing yourself to know that you are a gift, that who you are is healing the planet, and that filling your well up every day first is how we give that love and how we heal. So I give this song to you that just says, I am a gift. No matter what age, no matter how I look, there's beauty in each stage. I am a gift, and I promise every day that when I look in that mirror, I'll say, I am a gift. Can you sing that line with me? Just say, I am a gift. You got it. I am a gift, and I've loved really well. And every year I've lived has a different tale to tell. And I've made mistakes, and I have some regrets. But I promise I'll never forget that I am a gift. Can you sing that line with me? I am a gift. times when I forget the truth about me when it seems time and youth they're just marching on without me well, that's when I might need you to find me and ever so gently remind that I am a gift God's precious child I was put here on this earth but only for a while so I make this vow and I say it with love that I am perfect and whole and enough and I am a gift sing that I am a gift Put your hand over your heart and say, I am a gift. I am a gift. Just really feel that, knowing that I am a gift. I am a gift. So now put one hand to the screen and say to someone, you are a gift. You are a gift. Just look at someone, someone's little face in the Brady Bunch squares. You are a gift. Tell somebody else, you are a gift. You are a gift. Just look around. You are a gift, 
Now put both hands to the screen and say it for all of us. We are. We are a gift to this whole community. Say, we are a gift. Say it one more time. We are a gift. Now put your hands back over your heart and say, I. I am a gift. So repeat after me. I am a gift. I am whole, perfect, and complete. I am whole, perfect, and complete. There's nothing I need to change. That who I am is enough. I am worthy. And I shine my light to everyone that I meet. Because the truth about me is I'm fabulous. There you go. And so it is. Thank you all for listening. Karen Drucker, thank you so much. Thank you. That was just beautiful. Um, what a gift. What a gift you were to us this morning, to our community, and what a gift our community is for each and all of us together. I'm Dorothy Bostetter. I'm very glad that you are all here today and that you were able to receive the gift of Karen's wise words and beautiful reminders. We know these things, right? We know that we are a gift, and we know that our thoughts and our actions, led by positivity, will indeed change the world. This is the time in our service where we bless our center with our abundance. We are not able to be together to pass the offering bags the way we are receiving your gifts in this very weird time is texting on the number on your screen or to going or go to unityofbellevue.org slash give to make your gift. As you enter into the consciousness of giving, I invite you to join me in our offering affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Hey, Dorothy, can I sing a little song right here? Oh, my goodness. We would. Yes, yes, yes. Divine love. Through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I, and so it is. Let's sing one more time. Have I also, I am so grateful, but let's do that again. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so. With gratitude filling our hearts for life, for love, for each other, for this community, for all that is, we give thanks. We give thanks for these offerings of time, talent, and treasure. We know that everything works out eventually for good, for those who are aligned with divine purpose. And so we align with divine purpose for our community so that all might awaken to their spiritual nature, so that all is transformed into divine beauty, so that all works together for good, so that the world heals. We bless this offering as it plays its part in the law of circulation. We give and we receive, we bless and we are blessed. We are so grateful and so it is.
Thank you everyone for, for uh, being with us this morning. My name is Monica McDowell Elvig and um, I am the center administrator. We welcome you with an open heart. We send a love to you through this virtual ethernet and we hope that you can feel that. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we invite you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. That's the best way to stay in connection with us and to know what's happening on a weekly basis as all of our offerings are online at this time. Our website is unityofbellevue.org and at the bottom of every page is a sign-up sheet for that weekly e-newsletter. So we invite you to sign up there. You can also uh, reach out to us by email or phone or give us a shout out on social media. We'd love to connect with you and find out who you are. I have some announcements for you about our online services uh, and groups that are going on this Wednesday at 1 p.m. We have our Wednesday Community Connect. That's when we check in with each other informally to help us stay focused on spiritual practices and principles midweek. That's a Zoom meeting, and you can find the Zoom link on our website, unityofbellevue.org slash launch. We uh, are also offering a men's group. Uh, normally it's breakfast, but now it's just the men's group this Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. And again, that Zoom link is on our website. This Saturday at 10 15 following men's breakfast they will be hosting our own bob dewald as he is going to lead everyone the men's group and any else anyone else who wants to join in for a free fraud prevention workshop particularly focused on this time of what might be um, happening during COVID in terms of fraud so again that's on the same zoom link as the men's group so you can just sign on at 10 15 and join uh, the men for this aarp a fraud prevention workshop. We are still collecting divine dining recipes. That link is on our website under events and also on our weekly newsletter. Our food truck, we actually have a uh, something happening in our parking lot every Thursday evening, 4 to 7 p.m. It's in uh, coordination with Nourishing Network, helping people get free food vouchers uh, during uh, this time if they are in food crisis. The food truck that will be in our parking lot this Thursday is called Bite, and it is Japanese, Korean, and Hawaiian food. If you would like to come and represent Unity, we invite you to join us. Our book of the month, we have a new book of the month starting next week with Reverend Marla coming back and do, giving her talks, Falling Upward by Richard Rohr, a spirituality for the two halves of lives. If you would like this book, I am happy to send it to you. You can find the link on our website under events and I will ship that to you. So um, uh, look for that in our newsletter as well this week. We have Q&A happening today following the service and not uh, a prayer uh, circle. So if you would like to stay on following the end of service. And, you know, we're going to have another song by Karen Drucker here. So stay on <laughs> even, even after the prayer protection. So just, you know, a little tease there, stay on and then, you know, stay on for Q and A because uh, we're going to be uh, um, chatting with the board. Any questions we have about our principles, practices, practices and policies. And our prayer chaplains are happy to pray with you and for you. You can send an email to prayerchaplains at unityofbellevue.org if you have any prayer requests. You can go to our website onto the prayer page and fill out the prayer request form there and that will go to them. And if you would like one of the prayer chaplains to, to call you either to pray with you or just to chat, uh, please put that in your message and one of them will reach out. World Day of Prayer is coming up this week, September 9th and 10th. If you are interested in joining that, all of the events are online. Just go to worlddayofprayer.org. There's also a link on our website under prayer. We are so grateful that you are here today. We are so grateful to Karen Drucker for being with us and sharing that heart-centered message of self-care, self-love, uh, so that we can heal the world. Thank you, Karen. Thank you to Becca, our fabulous music director, for putting this series together. This was the finale, and wasn't it a great finale? Thank you, Becca. 
Thank you, Susan, to uh, helping co-lead this service, to Dorothy for being our board host, to Jan for leading our meditation service. We are going to close with the prayer for protection, and then Karen is going to lead us in a close out song. So let me first just get back to sharing my screen. Let's pray together boldly. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Okay, so this has been so fabulous to be with you all. I hope you'll stay on and I can answer a few questions myself. So this is a closing song I wrote. <clears throat> Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. Ain't that the truth? It goes like this. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. For joy, we are making a new world now. That's the whole thing. Let there be peace. Sing it out now. I am a stand for peace, love. Let there be love. I am a stand for love, joy. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. Sing it out now. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. One more time. Let there be peace. Put your hands together. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. One more time. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. Sing that line again. We are making a new world now. We are making a new world now. And so it is, and so it shall be. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed week. Stay on for Q&A. Thank you.